Right. So you really do understand the doubling, the double needle. Does the double does the double needle help you? The syllables? Yeah, the syllables don't really help. It's if I if I'm not thinking very carefully, I have to remember the quarter. That's that's just it. And if I Okay. Have, so then you're thinking eight thirty seconds to the quarter? Basically? Yeah, I kind of think, okay, so I have I go from one, two, three, four to then the alternating. Okay, and then what happens though with 30 seconds? Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't know. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just doubling it because you intuitively know how to double it. Because basically you're doubling, right? You're doubling that last one. Well, you're doubling all of them, but it's easier to double when you go from faster to even faster than when you go from... It is. It of course, is. And I it should be. Not too much. I have trouble. I have to think of the I have to think of it as a unit that's being split like pie, not the actual count. Now somebody right. somebody wrote to me that he wrote to me that he used the Starer book. Robert Starer is a composer, 20th century composer, and he he reads a book about rhythm and in the context of of this counting. But anyway, he said that he with one hand I do this often. He, he marks out his quarters on the piano. Then there have to be eight of those, right, for 30 seconds. If this is your quarter, then six, seven, eight, seven, right? That's kind of hard. That's kind of hard. It's easier to, to mark the sixteenths through that quarter, right? Because it's four. So it might be hard. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, da 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 da. -da. I think that those syllables that conductors use, they never count. Conductors, you know, great symphonies, they'll go oodle, leedle, doodle from, from the measure four, deedle, leedle, leedle, and then the orchestra starts. Or just the baton goes up. But if they had to do that, they might use syllables. Yeah. So now with the contrary motion, what's presenting the issue is not your consciousness of counting, but the, the, the navigating the new terrain of. of, of yeah, and I like the mashed potatoes business, where I just, you know, get your, get your center of gravity across these and do some push-ups off them, so that you think of a big cluster instead of individual notes, right? And then, and then coasting across the cluster. How do you not get too deep in on your pinky on the left hand? Uh, my five finger ends up almost touching the bow board when I try to block it. Well, look here. The thumb is on the edge. The thumb is always going to be the outermost finger because it's the shortest, right? Right? So the thumb must be toward the edge of what, if we call that a sharp, indeed it's a sharp, we're in B major or B minor, whatever you choose to do. So the, the thumb, if the thumb goes deeper, we're in trouble because it pushes the hand too deep in. So where's your thumb right now? Right, that's where it should be. And then, remember we talk about the hands like the clothesline arms, yeah? And then falling down very gently and naturally. Now what I see here, I wish I had, I should really take, let me take off the camera here and, and bring it around. You could see where my five is, but I have different, different length fingers, surely. But there's where I am. Can you see my five? Can you see that? Okay, so my five is a little lengthened. My thumb is at the edge. My middle fingers are like brothers and sisters, more or less. A five is a little long. Is long. It's not curled, right? Yeah, it's kind of out. It's, it's relaxed out. Yeah. What you want to do too is do a little bit of rotation forward, right? Because you don't want to freeze your hand, so you go finger impulsing up and down. That'll freeze you up, right? Finger impulsing is not good. Yeah. That's why, and I'm not great at finger impulsing. That's why I, I have the assist of the rotation. Forward. Exaggerate. Look what I'm doing now. Why am I doing this kind of? Yeah, because it look, it's, a, it's a rocking motion. So, so you won't get frozen into finger impulses, which are really hard to do when you go fast. You'll get tired. Yeah, so see if you can, see if you can do more of this. Make it like a little rock, a rocking chair. Think up. 
ride in deep, though. I can't, or I'll get all out of out of alignment. Yeah, I do. I do bank up a little bit when I get my. You should. You should. Right. And I think the more you do that, the more you're going to be able to roll across in the fast speed, right? Five, four, three, two, with a little roll forward, right? Hardly using my fingers. Yeah, forget the thumb for a minute. Just, just take care of five, four, three, two. I, I can feel the difference there. And my thumb, something about swinging that around. Okay, now get the thumb lined up where you want it, because you don't want it going like this, right? We don't want to have the in and out. We want to say where is the center of gravity across the five fingers. And you want to have the freedom to, to what? Pivot forward slightly. You don't want to go completely forward. That will not be good. But just think forward, 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 forward. Just try that. Yeah, dooly lum, think dooly lum, dooly lum, dooly lum, dooly lum, dooly lum. That looks very good, what you're doing now. Feel that now, okay. I'll that right, right. In other words, you want a bigger energy, and I'm I'm laughing because somebody emailed me. I get a lot of you know emails from YouTubers who are subscribers, and someone insisted that everything is fingers down, fingertips. Fingers. Yeah, and I had done a blog on the opposite, and I said okay. you you can keep your ideas and I'll keep mine. But I know he wanted to have a big discussion, but he was convinced it's all the tips of the fingers. But we know. But there's something behind that. But then there's something behind those fingers that that energizes. It it comes in as energy infusions. And nothing will tense up my plane more than when I'm really focusing on rigid fingertip. Right. You can be sure that will help you. I call it the mashed potato. Somebody laughed when I called it mashed potatoes. Because <laughs> you have a little mashing your potatoes underneath it. Because the piano doesn't want to be a hard surface, right? To get a beautiful tone. It has to have a kind of density to get that gorgeous sound that you want, right? Not that, unless you're doing staccato and you're bopping around, right? Yes, it was Irina Gorin who said um, the, the jello ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that helped me a lot in terms of thinking you can you can take some of that silly putty. I don't personally put. Maybe it'd be okay on a keyboard. I don't like it putting it on my piano. But I put a little board, a wood board, for the students, and I had them simulate the feeling of going across the clay. And then when I took it away, I think of a video of that. The student played so much better, much more beautiful tone. It makes sense. It makes sense. This is the the, the secrets of of you know tone production. Because it's more mental and physical, but it's also mental images, right? Yeah, that, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so that's what I suggest you do. You could take each hand and roll back and forth and think of a rocking chair or any kind of rocking motion. Then do that hand and then synchronize back and forth, especially for contrary motion. The good news is same fingers, same time, right? Yeah. Same fingers, same time. The other thing I do in the air a little, and this is practicing away from the piano, is, is practicing this side to side, but I go over a curve, right? I don't go like anything like linear, but I have the curve because that's what the rocking motion gives you the curve over, right? Yeah. And then you could transport that down to the keyboard, put your hands in your lap, go back to this, think of the, the thickness, the molasses, whatever, and then go rolling this way. And believe it or not, that's going to help, I think. Yeah, well, you know, if that starts happening, what I would suggest is you go back to the clothesline with your arms hanging and then come down like little clouds, you know, coming down de deftly and naturally to the keyboard without any anticipated, you know, uh, premeditated attack on the position or grabbing the position. 
So, you know, go back to this again. You can do some mashed potatoes all over again. Da -da. That really loosens you up. The rolling motion. So you want to restore the roll from one to five, five to one, one to five, five to one. Like a pendulum swing too. I have a feel yeah, but you have to really be relaxed. The whole thing is just letting go. And if you miss a note or two, so what? But it's better than grabbing. You know, getting Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you can do it. And I don't think you'll get so much pain if you really are letting everything go and not holding on to notes or fingers or wrists or elbows or arms, whatever. In other words, a free flow of energy down to the fingers. Yeah, okay. So then roll up and roll back and roll up and you can see what I'm doing. Roll up and roll back and roll up and roll up. I don't have to play it loud. Being louder is simply weighing more with the same motion. Right? We're not looking for, for, for power on these. Okay. That's right. And and then and you'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. 